I have clicked onto the tropical tip before Tuesday evening, August 27th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the latest information for your location. We continue to watch our two storms in the Atlantic very briefly about Tropical Depression 6. This is still a sheared storm, a little less sheared than yesterday that's going to scoot off toward the northeast. It is expected to eventually decouple from the mid-level center, which is expected to drift southward and actually have a role to play in the evolution of Dorian, uh, which will be interesting and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but other than this, it is expected to be kind of weak on its way northeastward and may even dissipate or get absorbed into a non-tropical storm as it moves towards southeastern Canada, but it could still bring some heavy weather to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, and so it will need to be watched for that, but not expected to be a significant threat. So we also have Tropical Storm Dorian now entering the northeastern Caribbean. And we've had a lot that has happened with this storm today. We woke up this morning with the center of circulation over St. Lucia, and these islands actually have a fair bit of mountainous terrain, so this disrupted the small, tiny center of Dorian <clears throat> as it passed over the island. But what ended up happening is the mid-level center, which has been tracking a little farther north all day, saw the surface center dissipate west of St. Lucia and then reform farther north and sort of took a jump in here and is now moving northwestward to the west-southwest of Guadalupe in the low-level center is somewhere in here. If we take a look at the recon plane that just entered, we have a couple planes flying this evening. These wind barbs are actually at 700 millibars, but you can see this convective burst in white and the center, they didn't quite fly right through it, but it's right in there. And the pressure uh, is unclear, but it was extrapolated to be under 1,005 millibars, which is a little lower than last time earlier in the day. So there is a little bit of strengthening today compared to last night and the system is a little bit more organized and if we take a look at the radar out of Martinique we'll see uh, there's Martinique here Dominica, Guadeloupe, and the center of circulation is up in here, and the radar doesn't see the west side very well, uh, but you can see some curved banding in the convection wrapping around this low-level center, and this is a much more organized uh, inner core type of look to the system than we had yesterday, and so this uh, Dorian is getting better organized. Not strengthening significantly just yet, but it is gradually intensifying as it moves off toward the northwest. It was originally forecast to be a hurricane upon arrival uh, in uh, the Puerto Rico area. It's probably not going to get there uh, given the dry air ingestion that is still occurring. You can see the southern half of the storm if the center is in here. doesn't have a lot of thunderstorm activity associated with it as we're now having dry air start to wrap around even onto the eastern side now uh, from the west side. So this is still a struggle for Dorian, fortunately for Puerto Rico, as this will limit the storm's wind potential, but a lot of heavy rainfall will be coming to this whole area, and that will be the primary concern is the potential for flash flooding in the mountainous terrain of the island here. Another important note today regarding the jump northward is this changes the short-term track actually quite a bit. The original track having this come uh, west of St. Lucia and then northwestward had this coming perhaps all the way into the, into the Dominican Republic and passing west of Puerto Rico. As it stands, the storm is now much farther north than both the models and the official forecast had it at this time. Now the biggest impact of this is that we're now pretty sure Durian's going to survive beyond the Caribbean because passing near Puerto Rico while the island is mountainous and would disrupt the small circulation that Durian has if it passes directly over the island, it is uh, nothing like Hispaniola which would provide even more disruption than Puerto Rico would and uh, Dorian avoiding Hispaniola would virtually guarantee that something, some sort of storm ends up on the other side and in the southwestern Atlantic where it would likely encounter a more favorable environment than Dorian is encountering now. Now there is some subtlety regarding just how favorable that environment is and when it begins improving. If we take a look at the water vapor imagery right now, Dorian is still off your screen just a little bit here, but there's Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. The storm's going to be coming up past Puerto Rico uh, during the next day or so, and a couple of features waiting for it are this upper low that we've talked about 
uh, starting to drift toward the west here and we see the other upper low to the northeast of that and the break in between that we've talked about. So these two are splitting away from each other, this one moving to the west and Dorian's going to be coming up while this upper low is moving to its west. And at the same time that this is occurring, we also have Tropical Depression 6, which funny enough, the mid-level low associated with this depression is going to decouple. So while the depression itself heads northeast, the mid-level low associated with it heads southward, sort of merges with this upper low as it moves into the same position over the southern Bahamas, and the two will form a uh, conglomerate upper level low over the Bahamas in a couple of days. Meanwhile, Dorian will be coming up to the east of that upper low. This dance between the two features is going to be quite important because as this upper low backs westward, it may impart some southwesterly flow over Dorian into uh, generating some moderate vertical shear values higher than what Dorian is facing now, which is very little shear at the moment. So the shear will go up and the question really is for how long will that be the case because this low will eventually get so far west and Dorian will start coming up and once the upper low is positioned to its west it will start pinwheeling around the low and at that point the flow around the upper low will be aligned with the storm's motion out of the southeast and that will lower the shear inevitably at some point which will probably leave Dorian in a very favorable environment because sea surface temperatures in here are very warm and this whole area of the Atlantic is much more moist than the Eastern Caribbean which has been quite dry and Dorian has been struggling due to that dry air. That is not the case up here. So with moisture and low shear, Dorian will eventually find itself turning westward in an area that will likely allow it or in an environment that would likely allow it to strengthen. The question is when does that occur? It could happen a little later. Uh, if this upper low is very close to Dorian while it starts making that turn, but if this upper low is a little bit faster or Dorian is a little slower, there will be a little more separation between the two and perhaps uh, the shear lowers sooner. Either way, this upper low is pretty weak, all things considered. It is not a very strong feature. Uh, so it is likely that Dorian will not get overwhelmed by this shear regardless of what happens. And the storm is likely to be intensifying in general during during this leg of its journey. A couple of wild cards to this evolution include the fact that since we have a tropical depression in here, some of this outflow streaming toward the south is influencing the evolution of this upper low, the fact that the depression's mid-level low itself is diving down at the same time. It's a little complicated, so models may struggle a little bit with this evolution for the next little while, and so there are some varying solutions. Some models have had the storm remaining weak and some have gotten stronger today. I would say the majority opinion now is that Dorian will be in a favorable environment at some point on its journey westward and uh, this will likely be a strengthening storm unfortunately moving toward the US uh, at some point within the next four days or so because again as this upper low comes westward it will pinwheel the storm around and at the same time we're going to have upper level ridging building over the southwestern Atlantic this is the European 500 millibar chart Thursday morning so we have Dorian passing uh, northwest of Puerto Rico and we have our upper low that we talked about to the west. So again, Dorian is going to start getting pinwheeled around this low to the west and we have a trough over the mid-Atlantic which is lifting out and getting replaced by this ridge right here which is going to expand westward over the coming days and so if we go out two more days to Saturday morning we can see this ridge has expanded all the way over the eastern seaboard uh, imparting a west northwest or sorry a east southeast steering flow on Dorian which is now strengthening on the European and moving west northwest toward the Florida Peninsula and this is a pattern that uh, would result in a landfall on the US eastern seaboard most likely in the Florida Peninsula on this particular run. However, models do disagree on the subtlety of just how strong this ridge is and where the edge is set. If we take a look at the GFS at the same time we'll see that the ridge is a little bit weaker in here and it has an edge to it and so the, the hurricane does turn toward the Florida coast but it actually tries to turn around this ridge and we have seen some model solutions today that suggest that in some scenarios there could even be a door out to sea for Dorian uh, but for now, that seems of lower probability, uh, given that most solutions do have this getting all the way to the coast. So unfortunately, we may be dealing with a landfall situation in several days. Uh, we are still about five days away from that. The official forecast 
shows Dorian eventually making it to Florida by this weekend, which would be Sunday, and that's five days out, so lots of time to watch this one, and things could change. We've got potential for uh, Dorian to uh, come into the Florida Peninsula, as shown here. It could go much farther south than this, and it could try to sneak up the coast farther into Georgia and the Carolinas, so there's a lot of area that this could cover. Things are still uncertain five-plus days in advance, so keep an eye on the forecast. Make sure you have a hurricane plan ready just in case it comes your direction, but right now the pattern could easily favor Dorian making landfall, and although the Hurricane Center does not forecast this to be a hurricane as it approaches Florida, I would say this forecast is going to get stronger uh, given the indications that we've seen today. So the environment will likely favor a strengthening hurricane hurricane on approach given what we know right now but again four to five days out things could change keep an eye on everything just in case that is it for today thanks for watching